back to these videos looking at Norman Conquest. And in this first series of videos, we're looking at the first unit, Anglo-Saxon England. In this series of videos on Anglo-Saxon England, you should have watched by now the first three. The first one was about the nature, structure and diversity of Anglo-Saxon society. The second one was about Anglo-Saxon religion. And the last video that you should have watched was about Anglo-Saxon culture. I'd like to consolidate everything we've been looking at so far. And in these videos, I said to you that a big historical debate with this period of time is whether Anglo-Saxon England was a golden age. And to start you off with that, before we look at that question, I thought it'd be good to look at a historian's interpretation. It is from Geoffrey Howarth's book about 1066. And in particular, this paragraph here is looking at the year before, so the last year of Anglo-Saxon rule. And I'm going to read it out to you. It was not a bad life to be English when the year began. It was the kind of life that many modern people vainly envy. For the most part, it was lived in little villages, and it was almost completely self-sufficient and self-supporting. The only things most villages had to buy or barter were salt and iron. Of course, it was a life of endless labour, as any simple life must be, but the labour was rewarded. There was plenty to eat and drink and plenty of space and plenty of virgin land for ambitious people to clear and cultivate. And of course, the life had sudden alarms and dangers, as human life has had in every age, but they were less frequent than they had ever been. Old men remembered the ravages of marauding armies. But for two generations, the land had been at peace. Peace had made it prosperous. Taxes had been reduced. People had a chance to be a little richer for their forefathers. Even the weather was improving. For a long time, England had been wetter and colder than it normally is. But it was entering a phase which lasted two centuries, when the summers were unusually warm and sunny and the winters were mild. Crops flourished and the men and cattle throve. Now, I'm pretty sure that you can work out from this that Geoffrey Harris is massively arguing that this was a golden age for England. And I'd like to look at whether his interpretation here and other historians who believe that England was a golden age is correct. So let's see if we can sum this up by looking at some of the evidence we've looked at in previous videos. So, Always with a question like this, there are two sides to the argument, and it's really simple. It was a golden age, or it wasn't. And we've looked at lots of evidence in the last few videos to prove that it was a golden age. For example, this is a united country under the one king with very strong government in terms of its shires and its burrs. Additionally, there were relative freedoms for women at this time. As we've talked about before, they could own more land. They could easily, if they had to, leave their husbands. There was also very strong religious ideas in this time. And in the previous century, in the 10th century, there were attempts to improve that church under St. Dunstan. And lastly, as we saw in the last video, there was really impressive culture. These people were talented craftspeople. They could produce brilliant and beautiful items of jewellery, literature, architecture. This was a people who were learned and interesting. All those pieces of evidence there prove that maybe Geoffrey Howarth has got a point. This was a golden age. But there's a wider picture that we'd also need to look at. And you could easily argue it was not a golden age. There was a very, very strict hierarchy that ruled society. It was great if you were the king or you were an earl. You had relative freedoms, you had probably quite a lot of wealth, you had a lot of power. But those people were few and far between. Actually, England at this time, the majority of the people were peasants. And the majority, even more than that, a lot of them were slaves. That was not golden for those people. They worked hard for little, or in the case of slaves, no money. There was huge corruption in the church, and you could see that, the best example to prove that, is Archbishop Stigand, who was really out in that role just to make money and get power. And that corruption was vast in the English church at this time. 
And the English church was arguably, arguably not that Christian in some respects. There were still huge amounts of belief in pagan ideas. The Bible was read in English in parts. Those ideas did not match the rest of Europe. So you really have to weigh this up in your head is do those things there on the left hand side that say that England was a golden age under the Anglo-Saxons, do they outweigh some of the problems that England had during this period? And there's no right or wrong answer with this, because as with all historical questions, it's a matter of interpretation and it's quite subjective. But it's important that we consider both sides of this picture.